Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. For those who's new, my name is Christian and I love plants. And in today's video, we are going to do a house plant update. I haven't done one of these in a while and pretty much I just want to share with you guys a few of the updates that's been going on with some of my plants uh, that I recently acquired as well as share with you guys some of the things I've learned because I definitely did learn a thing or two. But yeah, so why don't we go ahead and get started? So why don't we start with a few of my rare plants? So these plants I acquired about, I think April 18th during my rare house plant haul video. So we'll start off with the Anthurium. So I have here the Clarinervium and then I have here the uh, Crystallinum. So both are quite well known in the Anthurium rare plant category, uh, mostly for their beautiful foliage rather than their uh, flowers that you guys see right there. Uh, unlike those flamingo plants or uh, Anthurium that you guys see at your stores, these guys are definitely well known more for their, um, their leaves, right? Because look at the pattern, they're beautiful, they're beautiful. So when I first got these guys, the first thing I wanted to make sure is uh, get them acclimated into my home so what I did with them is I put them in a greenhouse because these type of plants typically are native to a lot more humid environment like high humidity levels so I put them in my greenhouse I also had a humidifier running at the same time and a fan just to make sure that it has good airflow that you know it's not going to create mold and uh, fungus on the leaves uh, when you have a humidifier running you want to make sure there's good airflow and circulation so uh, it's not always like wet and moist there but I did that for you know a good two weeks I wasn't running my humidifier or did I have these guys in the uh, greenhouse like all day long uh, so pretty much what I would do is I would have them in the mornings and then you know around like afternoon I would open them up and I'll let them out as well too and then put them back there in the evening so that way they kind of get used to the humidity level that's outside the greenhouse so normally in the greenhouse I have it around like 70 to 80 percent and then outside the greenhouse like here in my living room for example is about 56 percent right now according to my hygrometer this is very useful so definitely get yourself one of these if you want to measure the uh, humidity level as well as your temperature and uh, that's the kind of humidity that I normally want my place to be is around like the 50% uh, I think anything greater than that you're gonna start creating mold so these guys are doing well they're thriving I obviously repotted them from their nursery container and you guys can see here there's already a bit of growth that's happening so one thing I learned when it comes to Ethereum, especially with these types as well as with some of the philodendrons that I'm gonna show you guys is they have very sensitive roots so they're very prone to like overwatering. so I wanted to make sure sure that the soil medium or my medium mix that I use for my Ethereum is quite airy. So currently this guy is in cocoa husk, uh, perlite, uh, pumice, and orchid bark, as well as a bit of uh, regular potting mix just to make sure that it's not completely airy and I don't always have to water this guy. But so far he's loving it and thriving. And then I also have a bit of sphagnum moss wrapped around the crown. So that kind of helps retain a bit of the humidity. So I've learned that certain plants like this one and the philodendrons, they're not as forgiving when it comes to overwatering, so you want to be careful when it comes to uh, watering these guys. The way I water this guy, as well as with the crystallinum, is I just actually look at the leaf if it's starting to look droopy or if it's starting to look soft. That's when I know it's time to water. So so far, these anthuriums are doing well, and like I said, I'm, start I'm really loving these guys because I, I can't wait till uh, these leaves starts growing and you know the leaves get larger because the, the leaves can definitely get huge when it comes to these types of anthurium. But uh, they're pretty cool looking plants, and uh, definitely in love with these guys. So the next two plants I also acquired uh, during the rare house plant haul video is the philodendron. This one is the giga. So this has more of the longer kind of oval shaped leaves and you know obviously velvety. Uh, looks so cool. I love this guy and recently repotted this as well. The original medium this was in included cocoa chips, uh, pumice, bark, perlite, peat moss, and expanded clay. And it's such a great mix. So I found that this guy was really thriving. Similar to the medium mix that I used for my anthuriums, this is quite airy so whenever I would water this guy the water would just drain through nicely and watering this guy only when I notice that the leaves are starting to become really soft and droopy uh, because I really don't want to stick like my finger in here because first of all it's a different type of medium mix that it's not like soil where you can easily do that and I'm sure I can use like a moisture meter but uh, for now the way I can tell when to water this is when the leaves start to look soft and droopy and as soon as I water this guy he perks right back up so definitely a really good medium mix so I repotted him in that same mix and he's got this new growth that's happening right now so really excited uh, similar to when I first got this as well as the philodendron uh, melanochrysum is I acclimated them first and slowly I'm introducing them more into uh, my home outside the greenhouse and uh, these guys so far are doing well now let's move on to the philodendron melanochrysum where I had a few issues with this one and I'm learning
learning a lot actually as I go through <laughs> this experience with this guy. So as you guys know, one of my favorite uh, houseplants right now, especially when it comes to rare aeroids, and uh, this is a beauty, and if you guys haven't seen that rare houseplant haul video where I had a moment with this one, I'd definitely check it out. I'll link a card right here. When I first got this guy, similar to the Ethereums and the Gigas, doing really well, I also acclimated him, putting him in the greenhouse as well, and you know, produced this new leaf that you guys see right there at the top, and was thriving really well. And then it was time to water this guy because I felt like the container was really light and the top of the soil was uh, dry as well. And I figured, you know what, it's time to probably water this guy. It's been about two weeks since I got this plant. Uh, you know, it's not that big of a container. He, he should be good for a drink. So I watered him and then I started to notice that um, the bottom leaf started to turn yellow. And I knew my first inclination when it comes to yellow leaves, especially at the base, is possibly overwatering. So I began to kind of watch it and monitor just to make sure it's not just a case of, you know, the mature leaf has died because that's also the case when it comes to some of your house plants is when the older leaves at the base uh, will just naturally turn yellow right just over time but I also noticed that the pot was extremely heavy as well and I noticed that the soil wasn't as airy so I tried to aerate the soil as much as I can without damaging the roots again aeration is just a process that uh, allows you to loosen up the soil so that way you allow more air to flow through at that point I realized like you know what this guy's probably over water because I've experienced a similar thing when it comes to my Pilia peperomiotis when I repot potted the guy and uh, I watered him and because it was a large container the container was so heavy and I can tell the next couple of days he was he was extremely overwatered so what I ended up doing with this guy is I actually removed him from the pot and then I started to slowly loosen up that wet soil without necessarily damaging the roots as much as I can to let some airflow and obviously let the roots dry and I realized that that soil that this was in wasn't the same soil or medium mix that the gigas was in which is more of this uh, tropical mix uh, quite airy uh, this almost seemed like it was just in regular potting mix so I definitely knew I had to change that soil up so I let him sit overnight to let the roots uh, dry out and then I created a mix that was very similar to what I'm using for my Ethereum which is mostly uh, orchid bark, a uh, pumice, perlite and a bit of potting mix just to kind of put this guy back in medium while at the same time I had this tropical mix that was used on the Gigas coming but I knew this guy just needed a bit of a uh, temporary medium so I used the mix that I was using for the Ethereums right now uh, which worked well because what I had to do next was I was very conscious that the roots may have experienced a bit of rotting so once I repotted this guy into my medium mix of cocoa hus, orchid bark, pumice, perlite and a bit of soil I then put him back in the greenhouse for another 48 hours until I can water him again because I wanted to make sure that I had a chance to water this guy with a bit of hydrogen peroxide so I added about 20% of hydrogen peroxide and 80% water in my watering can then water this guy and watch that water drain through so a couple things when it comes to hydrogen peroxide and why I use it is because it does help kill a lot of the bacteria or anything that's going on within your plant and root system and I knew if there was a chance that this guy had a bit of root rot it would clean that out and it would kind of just you know have a kickstart or reboot and that's what I was trying to do and obviously you guys also noticed that I'm now using a terracotta pot for this one as well as for these uh, rare plants and that's because terracotta pots is really good when it comes to airflow you know these are obviously have tiny pores uh, surrounding them so air can just flow in and out of it so it does help when it comes to that additional airflow and ensuring that this guy is not sitting in wet medium or wet soil. That's what happened and then the next few days it was looking fine and then I started to notice that you know the next three leaves on this base right here starts to turn yellow and eventually they're gone now so you guys can see that this bottom half is now bare and has no more leaves and I'm pretty sure it's calmed down now it got settled into its new soil mix you know I think the reboot of the hydrogen peroxide obviously kind of rebooted this guy it has a new growth that's showing up which is a good sign always obviously this is not gonna work because this guy's just gonna grow bigger and this is gonna be bare so I had two options here I had to air layer this guy and air layering is something I've never done before I'm new to it it's pretty much a propagation method where you try and promote roots growing from a node or aerial roots while the plant is still attached to the mother plant and once those roots grow then you kind of chop it off and then plant it into its own soil medium yeah so fairly new for me I'm nervous and excited at the same time of doing it and really how you air layer is simply just taking wet moss and wrapping it around the node and aerial roots that you guys see here and then using like a plastic or saran wrap to kind of seal that and then making sure that that wet moss is nice and moist consistently 
obviously. So every day I'm gonna go in there, you know, check it and just spray it with a, a mister just to make sure that, you know, that soil is moist. And in a couple weeks, I'm hoping there's gonna be roots there because uh, he's gonna feel a lot better and look a lot better, you know, once this guy is a little bit lower to the medium or the pot and uh, he's got full leaves at the base and then growing taller again. Cause this guy is a fast grower. So that's the exciting thing about this one, right? I'm not too worried that, you know, he's not gonna look as good. I am just mindful that I'm hoping my air layering method works here. I think that's pretty cool, something new I'm learning and in that way I can apply that same method maybe to my ficus elastica, you know, because I am considering cutting the top. Uh, but yeah, so that's an update on my philodendron melanochrysum. So definitely follow along on my Instagram to uh, get some updates on how this guy is progressing. The other option I had, which, you know, I heard other people uh, works for them, is putting some cloning paste around like the nodes to kind of promote new growth. And uh, I know um, Nikki from Plant Pots and whatnot, uh, she's doing that method, you know, she messaged me on Instagram trying to, uh, you know, give me some tips on it. I haven't tried that yet. I want to try this air layering method. And then once we cut this guy off, obviously we're going to have this kind of like, you no know, stem here that's going to be bare. So maybe then we'll put some cloning paste and see how that's uh, working. But those are a few updates on my anthuriums and philodendrons. And then this Hoya Matilde, uh, if you guys remember as well as part of my uh, houseplant haul video, uh, I picked this guy up, obviously a bit more mature and larger. And it's got a lot of these like air roots you guys can see here. And then also all these like um, pentacles, which obviously is kind of the starting point of a bloom. And you guys can see right there, he's got this beautiful bloom, which I was so excited about. You know, when I did my Hoya third collection, I noticed it then of this like little pentacles. And then, you know, since then, I guess that's been over about 30 days now, it produces new bloom. And because he's got a few around this vine, I'm confident he's gonna bloom throughout the rest of the year and pretty cool. The scent of the flowers, uh, there's obviously a scent. It smells like flowers, you know, it's not like an off-putting smell. I know some Hoyas maybe put out like off-putting flowers. Pretty cool that he's blooming because I've only had one other Hoya bloom on me, which is the Angleriana. And I've had that guy for over a couple years now. But uh, yeah, so those are quick update on those plants. Now I wanna give you guys a few quick updates on the plants that I propagated a couple months ago as well as repotted a few of them uh, last month. So we'll start with the uh, Asingonium. So this is the uh, Wenlendii. Pretty cool name, sounds like a Harry Potter name. But what I realized and learned about this uh, Syngonium or Arrowhead is first of all, they're fast grower and they're really sensitive to bright light. So I actually started to move this closer to the window only to realize that, you know, it was obviously starting to get burned even though there was no direct sunlight to it. So I had to move these guys back. But this particular plant I noticed on the leaf here, I don't know if the camera can uh, see this, but it's got this like iridescent shine to it that makes it look really cool and the light kind of reflects on it. So it does seem like one of those Harry Potter plants, not only the name, but uh, quite magical in my opinion. So pretty cool looking. I think definitely my favorite arrowhead. You know, I thought it was going to be the pink splash that was going to be my favorite, but uh, not at all. Definitely this one is pretty cool looking. So really unique. And I repotted these guys last month along with the jade. So, so far they're settling in and has kind of shot out a few new growths here. So, so next update here are my pothos. I'm actually gonna stand up so that way you guys can see how massive these guys are because they look pretty cool. All right guys, so we have to stand up so that way I can show you guys these pothos that I repotted. So if you guys remember during my uh, repotting and propagation video, I repotted my uh, golden pothos, my neon pothos, and the pearling jade. So we'll start with the, the pearling jade. So if you guys recall, this was already trailing really nicely, but the top was extremely bare and now it looks full and that's because the cuttings that I was propagating, I actually planted it back at the top here. So now it's got a nice full crown. And then when this guy starts trailing, it looked really nice. But yeah, I am loving the look on this guy right now. So he sits on the top of my bookshelf here on my office desk and the trail looks so good. Uh, the only thing I wish when it comes to the Pearl and Jade is I wish their leaves were a little bit larger and bigger, but I think they're naturally smaller than like say a Golden Pothos or a uh, Neon. But if I was to probably, you know, put a stake on this or a Moss Pole, I wonder if the leaves can get bigger than this. But in any event, it looks pretty stunning and beautiful. And like I said, let me step back so you guys can see how long this trail is and uh yeah so the next pothos i also repotted is the ta-da the neon pothos so my favorite pothos ever look how stunning the color is on this guy and look how long the trails are it is just humongous and obviously sitting at the top of my bookshelf upstairs in my bedroom trails really nicely and similar to the pearling jade i actually uh, took the cuttings that i was propagating in water and i planted them back at the top there so making this crown a lot more fuller than it was before and yeah the trails continue to obviously grow and thrive. So a few of you guys have asked what happens to the vine when you cut and propagate it. And you guys can see right here that this is where I cut this guy and it continued to uh, shoot out new growth here as well as new growth there. So that's pretty much 
what happens to most plants is when you do prune them or cut them, uh, they need to grow somehow, right? So they will push up growth, typically on the sides of that vine, uh, you know, similar to like your monstera if you were to cut and propagate that. But uh, yeah, look how beautiful this guy is. So definitely a favorite. I originally thought I wanted to put a moss pole on this guy to try and promote the leaves to be a little bit more bigger, but it looks so much more better just trailing down. Uh, however, I did put a moss pole on the, ta-da, the golden pothos. So check this guy out. Look how massive and how much he's grown. It looks so much more fuller than what it was before. And I actually never took any of the cuttings that I had and planted it back at the top. I just kind of wrapped his uh, vines around this moss pole that I bought. Not the one I made, but I think I'm gonna replace it with the one I made soon because it's a little bit bigger. And since then, it's been growing like crazy. The leaves are a lot bigger. And on top of that, they're a lot more variegated. So it has a lot more of that golden color. And I remember when I was in Tulum last year, I saw huge golden pothos just growing on the side of the trees and it just looks so freaking cool how huge their leaves can get, especially with that golden variegated color. So really, really excited for this guy because I want this one to be a floor plant and I want to definitely grow as tall as, you know, get it up to the ceiling. I think that would look so cool. But yeah, so those are just some quick houseplant updates. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and learned something new. Uh, obviously, I'm just here sharing kind of my experience with you guys. And uh, even though I've had plants for a while now, you know, there's oftentimes I'm still learning new things. So pretty cool just going through the experience. But uh, other than that, enjoy the rest of your week and we'll see you guys soon. Peace.